Hey, basketball fans. Welcome to a brand new episode of your favorite WNBA show, Around the Rim. Co-host LaChina Robinson, joined by my amazing co-host, Tarika Foster-Brasby. And we have hit the final stretch, headed into the WNBA playoffs. We hope you've been glued to your television, taking in all of this amazing play. Oh, there's so much on the line. Tariq and I will get into the standings in this conversation. We will talk about who's in, who's not, who's hot, which matchups may just blow up your playoff bracket if you're already starting to prepare for that. So, T, you ready? Which, what's, what's top of mind for you right now? Um, Who told Washington to get healthy right now? Ooh. Because I think the scariest thing as of today is a healthy Washington headed into the postseason. So I can't wait to delve into this conversation because that that one is the one that's sitting on top of me on mine for me. A big win over Minnesota, huge surprising win over the Aces. Girl, Elena Deladon looking like Elena Deladon. Y'all well, gotta be nervous. And the and the hope is the hope is see see it's interesting because Washington is actually like moving up the standings, right? So they're like in fifth place right now. The scariest moments were were where it looked like they could end up in like seventh or eighth, because or 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 six even because the the Sun, the Aces. Uh, the New York Liberty, you don't want to see Washington in the first round. Okay. Don't. That is, that's not what you want to see. So now it looks like if they can push up to fourth, we'll get to that in a moment. Um, It won't be as much of a c- concern. And if they end up in that four or five against Dallas, anyway, let me tell you guys where we are in the standings right now. Las Vegas is one, New York is two, Connecticut is three. All teams have clinched their appearance in the playoff. Mind you, though, interestingly, New York is number one in the power poll for ESPN um, because they've been playing well, and Vegas has lost, I think, three of their last five or six. So we'll get into the number one seed in a moment. Uh, Dallas Wings are fourth, followed by the Mystics at five. Atlanta is at six. Um, Minnesota Lynx are at seven, LA Sparks at eight, Chicago Sky at nine, Indiana Fever is at 10. They are actually still in the conversation for a playoff berth, thanks to the Atlanta Dream. Um, and then Seattle is 11th and Phoenix is 12th. Seattle and Phoenix have both been eliminated. So right there, as you probably could hear, everything from four to I mean I guess you could put the fever in there but it would be a long shot four to ten is still open in terms of who makes it in it's also still open in terms of who where everybody finishes and the biggest part of this is who lands in that fourth seed because that team would then host in the first round right now according to our ESPN researcher Jenny LaCroix Dallas Wings have a 96.4 percent chance to be in that fourth spot i said 96.4 percent. so the purpose of this conversation will say dallas ends up in that fourth spot but tarika when we look at the teams washington atlanta minnesota los angeles chicago where is your biggest concern as far as who is not locked in and who do you feel like um, is really striving right now? So I've been on this train for the last few weeks and I'm going to keep riding this train and that's the LA Sparks. Mm-hmm. I, I had an opportunity to chat with Kurt Miller on Tuesday, which was the first time um, or Sunday, the, the Sparks played the sun on Sunday. First time that Kurt Miller was back in that building. Um, it was great to see him. Great to talk with him. And the one thing that he said that stood out to me is he's like, this reminds me of the 2016 year with Connecticut, where we were just kind of putting ourselves in position to be good. And then for the next six years, we were a contender team. Mm-hmm. And I 
feel like he's absolutely right about that. This uh, L.A. Sparks team got hit pretty hard with injuries early on. And I think for the most part, they were even going through a losing streak where we were like, we don't know what L.A. is going to be. Um, we don't know how L.A. is going to feel this out. No Chanae, no Lexi. At one point, they didn't have Jordan. They didn't have Lasia. It was just like, what is happening? And then they went on a six-game win streak. And then they started to get some pieces back. And then they moved from the 10th seed to the ninth seed to now the eighth seed. Um, of course, they also had some help from teams like Chicago that were a bit rocky at that time. But I say all that to say that this team's trajectory is in the right direction direction at the right time. So when mm -hmm. I look at a team that is putting themselves in position to lock in a spot and stay there, they're the team that I think stands out the most to me. Well, and they should because they have won, I believe now it's six of their last eight. They did lose to Chicago last night, which is interesting yep. because LA and Chicago right now are in that eighth and ninth spot. Mm -hmm. Chicago actually owns the tiebreaker over LA uh, with that win last night. So that will be interesting considering the fact that LA is only a half a game ahead yep. of the Chicago sky and shout out to Chicago sky, a team that just, I mean, they lost everything last year. You know what I'm saying? Like they had callback, they had data Evans, they lost everything they this had year, Rebecca, too. Re Rebecca Gardner, which she ended up getting injured. So, like, so many unknowns. Izzy Harrison injured. And despite all of that, you even have a chance to squeeze into the playoffs. And this is not to disregard, you know, I know LA's had injuries. Every team has had their things. But I just didn't feel like this Chicago roster even really had – what they needed to get here. Like, I didn't yeah. know how all these pieces were going to fit together. And so for them to even be in this situation, like shout out to them, like Cordy Williams and, you know, Marina, Elizabeth Williams has been really, really big. Um, and like I said, Ka, Dana, all of those pieces. So um, for me, the team is probably, and you mentioned them, the Washington Mystics. I mean, they're the team that is the scariest in that last little bunch, five through nine or 10. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the aspect of it that really is interesting to me is that most of the teams that beat Washington when they were injured were teams that gave them fits on the interior, teams that were big. And hello, they were missing Shakira Austin and Elena Deladon. So what that said to me is you had the ability to match up pretty well at every other aspect of the game, but you're talking about two of the best bigs before the season started, or even when the season started, I called Elena and Shakira arguably the best post combo in the league. And yep. that obviously didn't materialize the way we thought due to injuries, but them two, that's a problem. So what happened in the absence of Shakira, of Ariel Atkins, of Elena Deladon, everybody else got better. Like I, Sykes got better. Hawkins got better. Sh Shatori Walker Kimbro got minutes. Um, obviously, Cloud had to be relied on sometimes um, yeah. for scoring. I keep saying my Isha Hines Allen, I believe, is like the ringer. Like, if she plays well, if her and Hawkins play well, to me, that's what makes Washington special. But this team is scary team. So yeah. I'll leave that at that. What team do you are you worried about? Um, that we may not see in the top eight uh, headed into the playoffs? I'm worried about Atlanta. I'm worried about Atlanta. They're three of eight um, for them uh, over their last 11 games. Um, this team had a hot July. I was afraid of Atlanta in July. And then come August, um, and you get you know a, a more up close and personal look at this team than I do. But come August, it felt like something had been off. Although there had been great games from um, Ryan Howard, Cheyenne Parker, man, Cheyenne Parker is balling. She was an all-star this year for a reason. She showed up so huge for them yesterday. Like you can see 
why people say Cheyenne Parker doesn't get the love that she deserves because she is just a true baller. And I love her leadership on this team. I love how she, what she brings to the interior post of this team, but it feels like something's missing. Something has something communicative wise has been lost between August and July. I mean, July and August. And I'm not sure what that thing is, but they are slowly falling. And the more that they fall down this ladder, the more I get worried that they have a possibility of either slipping down too far of either just landing barely making it into the playoffs or not making it at all so I'd be interested in seeing what these last week last six games look like for Atlanta because they're they're making me a little nervous yeah yeah they are um, and what I will say about the dream, obviously I'm their, their home commentator, but I am a WNBA analyst, NBA analyst. So that's my job, um, to be honest, to be critical, um, when needed. And what I will say about this team wholeheartedly is that number one injuries hit them at the wrong time, mm -hmm. losing Alicia Gray, even though it was just for two games, huge, like she's one of their all-stars. It messes with your momentum, right? Where you got to now can reconfigure lineups, but, and it wasn't just her. They lost Nia Coffey for the season and yeah. on paper, people may say, Oh, losing Nia Coffey, that's not a big deal, but she is literally the foundation of their defense she, her iq her athleticism her ability to switch at the four spot like all these things are important to the way atlanta plays defense so washington's injuries happened and they were able to recover yeah. atlanta's injuries are now causing them issues and i will also say that i think this is one thing that people overlook with atlanta is that this is a young team a young team in terms of their experience, a young team in terms of what they're being asked to do. Cheyenne Parker's never been asked to lead a playoff team before. Lead. Alicia Gray is an all-star for the first time, so that's a different level of pressure. Ryan yeah. Howard is in her second season in the WNBA, and this is an organization that as a whole has not been to the playoffs since 2018. When you look at some of the teams that are around them, even Chicago, yeah. you've got a finals MVP. You've got a Courtney Williams that has played in two finals. You know, um, the you know, Mystics, they've got tons of folks. LA, Jordan Canada, Canada is a championship point guard. She played in Seattle. She's got championships. Yeah. Um, Neko Gumake, we know what she's accomplished. Dierka yep. Hamby just won a, a championship. Azaree Stevens has won one. So when you look at the teams like around Atlanta, there there's a lot more experience in there um, than they have. So yeah, I, what I, I have throw out there too, though, to to your point though, is I also feel like we kind of sometimes say, you know, it's not really how you start, it's how you finish. Mm -hmm. But I think in the case of Atlanta, how they started really is the reason why they aren't out of the playoffs because the, I feel like they had such a great start to their season. Mm -hmm. At one point, we had Tanisha Wright in the conversation for Coach of the Year, rightfully so. I think because they started on the right way that it has them in the position that they are now. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily, again, we're talking about concern. I'm concerned. I think they will still manage to maintain their position and be in the playoffs, but they are the team that concerns me, but I got to give them kudos for really starting off the season the right way, doing what they needed to do in order to be in a position where if they are incurring injuries, they're not completely out of the water. Right. And with that youth comes some much needed mental toughness Yeah, comes, you know, how do we get over the hump and, and not quit? You know what I mean? Like, so there's a lot of learning that has to be done. So I'm not saying this is just all things that are beyond their control. They're very much in their control, but it is, they're at a point of the season where it's like, are you a playoff team or are you not? We'll find right. out. All right. So um, I want to talk for just a moment about some of the, the top, few teams um we know that vegas and new york matched up again this week another blowout low-key um where uh new york beat las vegas uh but the standings are still one two and three vegas new york and connecticut connecticut does have a chance to finish second which means they would host if they made it to the semifinals round but Tarika is uh rolling her eyes so is there a problem there is a problem because listen like you like you, 
I am the home sideline reporter for the Connecticut Sun, but I am also a WNBA analyst. And I'm also the kind of fan that's going to keep it real. And in keeping it a buck, Connecticut about to be three. And that's cool. Like, that's cool. It's no reason to trap. There's no reason to be like, oh, listen, if they end up with a second seed, that's great. I think it's very interesting that as, as how these teams started off, no one has locked up a seeding yet. Vegas ain't locked up one yet. New York ain't locked up two. The way this season started, I would have known by now that Vegas would have been number one and that would have been the end of it, right? So we are at a point in the season where things are happening. But I'm to keep it real, and they will tell you too, when you do things like have a 20-point lead in a game, and then lose it in overtime, there are still many things that you got to fix and that you got to get together. Injuries have absolutely played a part in that. Even with DJ Carrington being out, my God, she, you know, is leading sixth player of the year for me. So it's huge for Connecticut that they're missing some pieces. But, uh, you know, Betty isn't 100% healthy yet. So she isn't able to kind of give them that, that center, um, perspective that they're really wanting and needing from her right now um olivia nelson adota is still figuring things out um she's looked much better more aggressive she double double a couple games ago like love it but i'm not i don't think new york is gonna lose all five games i just don't think they're gonna get that kind of help so i would much rather they be cool with being three play to play the best you can to end this season and let's not give false hope. If you make two, cool. But three is fine. Three three is better than where anybody thought you were going to be this season. And I believe it's mathematically impossible. I, I'm not looking at, let me actually look at Jenny's. I think it's mathematically poss- impossible for Dallas to end up in third. I believe. Are you well, no, the highest the- they can, yeah, the highest they can be is third. Oh, and Dallas. The lowest, yeah, Dallas. The highest they can well, be is third. The lowest they can be is ninth. But well, I mean, well, you don't want Connecticut to slide down and play, be playing no, the Washington. You Mystics absolutely don't. And, you uh, absolutely playing the Washington don't. Mystics in that four or five matchup either. It's not you. I, I, I don't. I would never. Please, I do not want to see Connecticut slide down into the fourth seed. I think that right now the way things are matching up, Minnesota is sitting in that sixth spot. Um, so if all things ended today, you'd have a Connecticut Minnesota matchup in which Connecticut's three and one against this team, right? Uh, Alyssa Thomas then had a triple double. She didn't score some. I mean, made history. You want to see a Minnesota if you're in the three seed, right? So. That's what I'm saying. Like, play to your strengths, hold tight, lock in, get healthy, and do that. I'm not about to sit here and provide this false hope that Connecticut is about to be the two seed, which would depend on a team that has only lost once this month. Now, granted, they do see New York on Friday. So that would be very helpful to their cause if they could mm-hmm. not get swept by this team this season. Mm-hmm. But I'm just keeping it a buck. I don't see them moving into two. Well, it sounds like you're saying you don't see New York losing all their games. It sounds like you're a New York fan the way you just tried to now talk around that. Now you're doing the most. You're doing but the all most, I'm man. you doing all the I'm, most. All I'm saying is, um, no, I, I agree with you, and I totally understand your logic. So if New York runs the table, they can get to, I believe, 33 wins. So there is a race going on for number one overall, because if it ends up the way a lot of people think it is in the finals, which I'm not saying this, and I don't know that I even think this is going to happen, but if it is New York and Vegas in the finals, who's going to host? In the regular season, the winning, the home team has won every game in in the series. So home court does does matter. And I, I don't know, T, what do you think about the Aces right now? Because... Um, they have, they've struggled a little bit more than I think we expected, um, six and four in their last 10 games. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so I'm not going to completely use the fatigue factor. And the reason why I'm not going to completely use the fatigue factor is because at some point this season, every team has had that road stretch game where they've played like nine games in 11 days or something along those lines, right? So 
it's unfortunate that you that that Las Vegas has had to have their stretch of games against a tougher part of their season. But every team has had to do it right. Every team has had has had to deal with that. What I think hurts them specifically over New York in and, and we've talked about this before. It's death. They just don't have the death to battle the fatigue of playing that stretch of games. And also the fact that it's 40 games this season. This time last year, we were already nearing the second round of the playoffs. This year, we haven't even gotten to the first round yet, right? So when you're adding that stretch of games to the fact that it's a longer season, to the fact that you don't have a lot of death on your bench to help supplement some of that fatigue, you start to see this. So mm -hmm. they do look a little bit more invincible now than they did at the beginning of the season. Um, and I, I love it, to be honest, because I said at the beginning of the season, I said it on many WNBA hoop streams, I do think Las Vegas has a great chance of getting back to the finals, but I wasn't sold on who they would play. Right. Mm -hmm. And so and I still am not sold on who they would play. But now even I have to question myself, because if you see this team up against that Dallas team that gave them fits in the first round and if everything held true, like if it was a one, two, three, four in the second round, it would be a Vegas, Dallas versus New York, Connecticut. I don't know where I don't know where the cards will would would lie or where things will fall. I am not as confident that they're just going to march their way to the finals as I may have been back yeah, in Yeah, past back so, Dallas. Yeah, after yes. Dallas beat them. That's not yeah. necessarily the matchup Big T. I don't know if you want to see Big T without uh Candace Parker. Do you feel me? You don't want to see T and you surely don't want to see Sa too. I still stand firm that the difference between the first time they met in that back-to-back -back kind of game was because Satu didn't play the second half. So, yeah. and I, and I stand on that. So I yeah. say all this to say, yes, Las Vegas looks a lot less invincible than they did at the beginning of the season. And it's actually shaping up to make quite an interesting and incredible playoff scenario. It is. And what I love about this time of year right now with everything being so tight is that no one can really rest anybody. You know, sometimes it's like, okay, we're locked in. So we're just going to rest our player. Ain't nobody locked. Nope. everybody's got to play. So every game, there's something on the line, which I think is great. Um, yep. Vegas's remaining schedule, now that they will get off the road and get some rest, um, they are Wash, Washington, Seattle, at Phoenix, and then um, Phoenix at home. I believe that's right. And yep. then, let's see, New York left has Connecticut at Chicago at Dallas, LA in Washington. Um, mm -hmm. Both of those last two at home. So we will what see makes what that interesting, LaChina, is that if these two teams do end up tying because they tie the season series, they're going to have to go based off of who has the best win percentage of over 500 teams. And right New now, York, New York has it. New York has it. But when you look at what you just said in terms of their schedule, New York still has to play Connecticut and Dallas, mm -hmm. whereas Las Vegas, their schedule is so much more favorable because they've got two against Phoenix and one against Seattle, two teams that have not reach the over 500 mark. Now I say that in that way on purpose because I don't agree that just because a team is not in the playoffs, that means that they just don't have anything to play for because a lot of teams like to play spoiler. Now, I I mean, who knows? I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not saying Phoenix and Seattle or whatever are going to beat Las Vegas. I don't know any mm -hmm. given Sunday, but what I am saying is don't think that the that that's just going to be a run over. They're going to want to play spoiler. They they still want to have a sense of pride in how they play, and they're still competitors. So I don't think this is going to be you know just a simple cakewalk. But I do think that Las Vegas does have the advantage if it does come down to a tie because they don't have to see any plus five hundred teams other than Washington. New York, on the other hand, has quite a few in their schedule. Yeah, I really and as I'm looking right now, I'm I'm thinking about Minnesota too because their their situation is critical. I mean, they are with they were without Jess Shepard last night and without Lindsey Allen um with a left thumb. Lindsey Allen is why this team was able to make a resurgence. So that right there, I'm I I I am in, I'm concerned about the links. Um 
shout out to all the strides they have made and when they have, uh, you know, where they've gotten themselves. Uh, what he else? Is not out of it though. Listen here, you predict. Listen, thanks to LA last night making some critical, you know, car coming up big for Chicago last night. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they Sparks had, had like three chances. They had to bomb. They did. They did. They did. Kyle made something happen with like 20 seconds left last. It was a 74-75 ball game. Like, it was close. But that Chicago win kept Indiana alive. I know it's like a 0.1% chance at this point, but I got to lie. They've won three in a row. You know what I'm saying? They've won. They have won Listen, three in a row. I made a prediction that the Fever were gonna make it into the playoffs. Carolyn keeps laughing at me, like, "Do you remember what y'all?" And I was like, "You better sit down, okay?" <laughs> yes, I know what I said. I said what I said. But you ain't wrong right now. Now we don't know what it's gonna look like after tomorrow. But right now, you are not wrong. <laughs> this was also this prediction was also made before the season starts, and I'm gonna tell you this right now. <laughs> If Aaliyah Boston is out for the rest of the season, I take it back. I take it back, okay? I'm telling y'all right now, I take it back. Hopefully, she's okay. She did leave the Atlanta Dream Game with a hand or thumb injury. If she is out, I take it back. That is hilarious. And that's that on that. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed the show today. Um, you know, just some fun. Hopefully getting you ready with some playoff storylines. Continue to tune into the games. And, of course, check us out. Tarika is at She Knows Sports on Twitter. I am at LaChana Robinson. Our podcast, excuse me, our YouTube show is at Around the Rim on Twitter. And yeah, shout out to our producer, Andrea. Anything else, see you got? No, that's it for me. Um, you um, you got some stuff coming up this week. Are you going to be on any television shows this week? Yes, that looks you. I I will be on Countdown on Sunday. Um, nice. ahead of the matchup between Chicago and New York. So make sure you guys tune in. Countdown starts at two thirty on ESPN two. How about you, nice. T? What you got? Nice. Um, same. I'm doing the Ion game on Friday, so I'll be on Ion. Um, Connecticut, New York, and then I have hoop streams at the same time. So if you aren't able to tune in the countdown, but you got your phone, lock in the hoop streams. Lock in. We'll see y'all next week. I love that you start talking trash right before we get on, and I'd be like, "All right, wait. Let's just say this on air, okay?" No, because <laughs> I can't believe that. Girl, we are still in position, honey. Don't try to play this. What, what is the when Jenny usually get puts Ooh. the percentage up here too? That's what I'm make. That's what I'm looking for. No, baby, keep looking. So they would need to lose. <laughs> New York would need to lose a few, like all of them. Yeah, New York would just have to lose. How many games they got? They have five games. Yeah, they would have to lose all five, so it's still a possibility. <laughs> All right, let's talk about it. And I recorded all that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Put that at the beginning Thank of the you. show. <laughs> Thank you, Andrea. We appreciate your creativity. It's of the much, show. It's much because... needed on the show. <laughs> Whenever you're um, ready. All this right. is why You're- you were trying to be having these little sneaky shenanigans right here. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because my, we have a great producer. That's what happens. <laughs>